Okay, this video is Unit 5.3 Continued, Continued. So it's, wow, it's the third video in Unit 5.3. Anyway, uh, I've got four more problems to work. I'm just going to try and lay in and work these problems. Um, a little review on the whole unit, though. We can break down this whole unit. Here's every equation, every single equation for a unit on conservation of energy. Uh, in the end, we have work net. This is our, to me, most important. Delta KE. Which then we can rewrite as work net equals one-half MV squared minus one-half MVO squared. All right. So we can do that. Now, in terms of work, what makes up, what things can be this? This work can be just a plain work, an FS. This work can be work done by gravity if you've got something going up or down a hill, MGY initial minus MGY final. This work can be done by spring, one-half KXI squared minus one-half KXF squared, where K is your spring constant, and X is displacement. We're about to use this equation for something. Uh, we can use like work done by friction as negative FS. And likewise, any resistive force, we can use just a negative FS of any way to represent that. Uh, other formulas you may need. Just make sure you know basic kinetic energy is one half MV squared. Potential energy due to gravity is nothing but MGY. Potential energy of a spring is equal to one-half KX squared. And if by some reason you need it, Hookie's Law, negative KX, although again, you don't actually have to really use the negative sign that much to get the answers that you need. But anyway, this is pretty much the summary of the conservation of energy chapter that we've got for algebra-based physics. All right, so let's go work example G. And I've got no idea if you can even read these when they're posted to the Internet, but those of you in the class have got these problems, so it's no big deal. So I'm going to start off. A block on a frictionless surface is pressed up against a light spring with a constant. The spring is compressed, released. Uh, consider the system. Find the speed of the block when that does. All right. So if you can't really read the question that good, here's what's going on in the problem. You've got a flat surface, and there's a spring on it. There's a block of wood compressed up against the spring. And it says that the block has a mass of half of a kilogram. Uh, the block is compressed. It says that the spring has a constant of 80 Newton meters. That means it takes 80 newtons of force to squish that spring one meter. All right. Let's see. The spring is compressed. Now let's talk about what to do with this. That means the spring is compressed. So I'm going to say that the spring has an initial compression of two centimeters, which would be 0 0.02 meters. That means the spring is going to be uncompressed. In other words, this problem is going to be let go, which means in the end that spring will not be compressed. So the XF I'm going to say is going to be a zero. What this problem wants to know is when this spring is released, when the spring is released, what will be its velocity? Well, we're going to say that its initial velocity is zero because it's just sitting there. Someone's holding this block and then they let go and boing, the spring gets shot down through here. Well, let's just do this. You could take this whole test and at least score one point on every question if all you did was write this, I guess, if I was kind of hearted. Wait, I'm not kind of hearted. Anyway, work net is delta KE. What is the only kind of work being done? No one's pushing this block. The block is it's not going up a hill. The block's not going down a hill. There's no friction. It's just a spring. So the only kind of work is the work being done by the spring. So we can come back and rewrite this equation as 1 half kxi squared minus 1 half 
kxf square equals one half mv square minus one half mvo square. Woo, that's a law of equation. Now here's the thing. xf, we've already said, is zero. So that cancels that term. The velocity initial of the object is zero. That cancels that. So all we're left with is this, one-half kxi square equals one-half mv square. Well, this is awesome. The one-halves even cancel. So if we take a look, this problem is nothing but 80 times, and I'm running out of room, ain't I? 80 times 0 0.02 square equals 0.5 times v square. And so all we've got to do is punch this punch this in a calculator. So 80 times 0 0.02 square is 0 0.032 divided by a half, which is I just did 5. Nang nang nang. 0 0.032 well it's going to be times 2. So that's 0 0.064. So we're going to have 0 0.064 equals v square. So let's take a square root of 0 0.064, 0.25. So the answer to this question is 0.25 meters per second. So there's our answer to this question in here. All right. So let's now get this out of the way. Let's go work another one. I'm getting excited. Love me some good physics class. Whew. Here's H. A daredevil attaches a bungee cord to his ankles. He's going out over a 15-meter tall, high, 50-meter high bridge. Uh, so here's the picture. The bridge is 50 meters, and we've got a 15-meter long bungee cord. He's two meters tall, or he stops two meters above the surface of the water. Now, all these distances in here only serve one purpose. We want to know how far did he stretch the spring. That is the only purpose of this. When he first jumps off the bridge, the rubber band, the bungee cord, isn't stretched. So that's a zero. So the whole purpose of everything it told you in this problem is how far did he stretch the bungee cord? Well, the bungee cord itself was 15 meters long. He stops two meters short of the water. The whole jump is 50 meters, which means that this X is 33 meters. So the whole purpose of all this talking and wordiness was for you to figure out how far the bungee cord got stretched. So we know that now. Y'all, this is a very easy problem. Work net equals one half m v square. Oops, minus one half. I didn't mean to write that. Can I do this again? Work net is equal to delta k e. There. Yes, it's going to turn into that. But anyway, what's the only kind of work being done? There's no nothing's pulling him down. This this. What kind of work is being done? Well, he went. He fell. So that means we've got work being done by gravity, but he's attached to a gigantic spring, a rubber band. That means there's also, so we've got two types of work being done. So when we go to work this problem, we've got work being done by gravity and we've got work being done by spring. Now here's the thing. There, that's the physics to work the bungee cord question. All we're going to do now is write more equations down on this. So this is going to become mg y initial minus mg y final plus one half k x i square minus one half k x f square equals one half m v square minus one half MVO squared. Look at all that goodness here. But check this out. Y initial. Well, 
I'm going to say for the bungee jumper, Y initial's the top of the bridge, and I always make my Y initial zero, which means he actually falls two meters above the water here. So that was 50 meters. I hope I hadn't messed all that up. Yeah, it's 50 meters. That means his Y final is actually negative 48. He actually falls 48 meters. So look at this. Y initial, zero. The spring, X initial is zero. His velocity initial is also zero. We've just marked half of this equation out. So all we've got is negative mg y final. We've got this negative one half k x f square, and we've got one half m v square. All we got to do is fill in the numbers. I mean, this problem is done. So we've got negative seventy times nine point eight times he fell. He fell forty eight meters. So negative forty eight minus one half. The spring constant is, oh my goodness, what it's, and I just realized I've been screwing this problem up. There's something else that's zero. They don't tell us the spring constant. We know that that was 33. Why hasn't somebody already said this? When he jumps, he comes to a stop. If he comes to a stop, that means his final velocity is zero. His velocity here is zero. His velocity here is zero, which means, here's what's neat in this problem, zero, 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 zero. There is no change in kinetic energy. It's all zero. Look at this. Here's our problem right here. Kinetic energy is zero. We're looking to see how springy the spring is. Let's see what we can do here. We've got negative 70 times 9.8 times negative 48. So, woo, that's a big old number. 32, 928, and then we've got 33 divided by 2, half of 32 is 16. I need that, 16.5. K equals zero. Move that to the other side. So we end up with 32.928 divided by 16.5. One, nine. And I just realized something that I knew that was a... Look at this number. One of the things in physics is being able to tell when you're screwing up. A spring constant of 2,000 would be... That wouldn't be a bungee cord. That would be a death trap. Look at what happened. I got so excited. Square. Square. I forgot that square. That's not 16.5. That is half of 33 square. That's 544. So negative 544.5. Five. So let's try this again. 32.928 divided by 544.5 equals a spring constant of 60 newton meters. Well, I would say that is a big difference from our earlier answer. And seeing as how I've just made like five videos in a row, I'm going to shut down because I almost screwed this problem up completely at this point. But anyway, thank you for watching the old Turd Ferg channel. And contrary to request, I'm not changing this to my name. It's just going to stay the Turd Ferg channel. Oh, excuse me. Turd Ferg 67. Anyway, thank you all for watching.